We're going to try a new segment here. This is a game that we're going to play. A very loose game with <laughs> rules that have not been well thought out. Dr- but. <laughs> to be fair, I came up with a game idea. Based on, I've never really played it that much, but I was like, this sounds like we could adapt this. And I've had to explain it to you like seven times, which makes me doubt whether I understand No, it, I'm just real stupid. But I don't know. So anyway, it's, it's a variation of Never Have I Ever, which is, I guess, typically a drinking game, but neither of us drink. Yeah, it's so, like a drinking truth or dairy type of game. Yeah, so, so. we're going to adapt it and just make it our own whatever. We're going to make it worse. Yeah, but it'll be about pens, so that's better, yeah, that's I sure. guess, if you're watching this. Okay, so the rules are we're going to say a statement. We're going to kind of alternate or whatever. It doesn't really matter who says the statement. We're going to say a, say a statement about something related to fountain pens. Never have I ever done whatever the thing is with a pen. Um, and if we've ever done it, we have to eat the candy that we have here. Um, and if we haven't done it, then we do nothing, and we just, you know, put that on our bucket list, I guess, apparently. Great. Um, so normally it's like uh, you're supposed to name like weird, like radical things that, yeah. you, that you have done and see if anybody else has done it and in like normally, a larger group. And normally like the thing is like some sort of like recompense, like you're, you're drinking yeah, it's is like, like, it's like you something, get the something you're like, drunk. yeah, it's like something you're like not supposed to have done before. Yeah, like I would ask you something that I think I know you've done, but I haven't so yeah. that you can get drunk before I, I But we didn't, we didn't really go that route because we don't really do a lot of like shameful things with our pens. So I just yeah. went the route of like, creative things are like things that like if you have a lot of pen experience maybe you've done these things and uh plus i just wanted more opportunities to eat weird candy with drew if so, you would like to you know you can play break, along break out the bourbon or something like that be our guest you can you know in the comfort of your own home however we're on the job <clears throat> we're serious when right. we're on the job yes uh so let's talk about the candies that we've selected for today drew oh, God. um well I, I credit you for both of these candies actually because yeah they're both you my provided, fault yes <laughs> So, um, go do, do yeah, your first. I, I have a well first. documented hate for dots candy around the office so much so that uh, a nuanced my, a nuanced hate a nuanced hate. Yes, I don't it's inherently not like, it's not despise like the, the flavor. It's right? not like the Good and Plenty's where we were both no. about to barf. Like, they're 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 not good, but they're not like they're not going to make me puke or anything. But they are where they shouldn't be. I hate the fact that they're in theaters. They're not good enough to be in theaters. There are so many other better snacks that, to be in theaters than dots. I don't like that they're in I gas stations. Agree with that. They're just everywhere. Why? They're not that great. They belong only in that weird candy section of Cracker Barrel where all the other nonsense that nobody buys is. That and is I, the place I think of that's for where they nonsense should be. candy. Right. They should be with <laughs> nonsense like the candy. They should Barrel not gift be shop. as everywhere as they yeah. are. I'm like, they're not that good to be everywhere. It belongs Why in Cracker they? Barrel with the super crinkly plastic. Yes. With like the they're, cardboard top so, to it. You anyway, know? obviously I get very passionate about things that annoy me and that makes people want to do that to get me all riled up again. So one day I Absolutely. walked into the office and literally my entire office is filled with dots. They are hanging from the ceiling. They are everywhere. There's <laughs> a, a wall of dots boxes Drew. blocking my ingress to my office. Ah! <laughs> You're kidding me! You're kidding me! Oh my god! Wait, turn the light on so I can see this. Oh my god! Why? <laughs> Why? Are you- no! No! Ah! Oh! On the door! <laughs> Everywhere. They're in the air vents. They're oh on my goodness. TCB. Oh my There's just oh. a big giant pile of them here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh there's, a, there's this sarcastic heart on my chair. <laughs> this evil, sadistic, <laughs> evil heart. Wow. This one says, hi, Drew, right here. <laughs> You know, wow. you know what the sick, demented part is? Oh, look, it's in your pen holder. You know right what the here. sick, demented part of this? This is the five languages of appreciation, <laughs> which clearly this person did not follow because they do not appreciate it one bit. She was terrorized by dots. Oh my God, serious PTSD. It was, all, it was like 50 I'm, boxes of dots. I'm not joking. It was, it was a bit much. I need to stop reacting to things. That, that's my fault. I'm bringing this upon myself because I get very fired up about things. 100%. That's the reason why we did it. It's victim blame because what it is. <laughs> anyway, it continued this Christmas. Christmas dots. I can smell them from here. My God. Cherry, lime, and vanilla flavored gumdrops. I'm just not even. Is the vanilla like the white part? I don't like, know. is the vanilla yeah, I in guess. everything? I guess. So I'm kind of excited to try these. I'm so, not happy about this. So, we don't buy a lot of candy for our, our kids. 
but they get like Halloween is like their time where they get to try every candy under the sun. Are they indeed? Um, both both my kids, especially my son, um, have declared dots as their favorite candy in the world through no coercion of my own because I'm I think they're okay. But it sounds like they have declared that just through the fact that you don't give them a, enough candy. I mean, they, they have know, nothing better to eat. They know that you don't like them because <laughs> like. Word gets word has gotten around <laughs> about Drew's passion or dispassion for dots. Ugh. Anyway, so for years, Drew has also been into just weird candy, not good or bad, just interesting stuff that you don't normally see. Yeah, why not so try it? Over the years, Drew will here and there drop off weird stuff. And a few weeks ago, Rachel comes home after picking up the mail at the office, and she's like, "These were sitting on your desk. They came from Drew. They are called." edible satellite wafers <laughs> they have to they have to qualify that they're edible because they don't seem edible and in fact on the back it says garrett satellite wafers have been in america since the 1950s this nostalgic candy has enjoyed a great reputation particularly in the northeast my parents are from the northeast they've never heard of this anyway this is your heritage sir where people love these candies so much they will do anything to get their hands on them that seems like an overreach. I did so many things. These satellite candy. wafers in with their unique combination of candy beads in an edible shell, which by the way is like styrofoam shell, um, uh, have often been a topic of conversation since the consumers discover you can eat the whole thing. You have to discover <laughs> that you can eat the whole thing? People that grew up with our satellite wafers just love them. I hope you will too, Garrett. Well, Garrett, they are non-GMO, I'll give you that. These, these are also peanut free. So, so these are like yay. styrofoam UFO type discs with little candy beads in them. It doesn't taste bad, it's just no. a very weird taste, textural experience. They taste like a very flat, compressed, stale cake cone, like an ice cream cake cone. Yes, that's exactly the consistency, yeah. is a cake cone. A little cone. sticky, but not, only sticky once you get in your teeth for a while. Which, I gotta have a complete, as, I gotta have a complete aside here. My niece had her birthday party, which, we're all vaxxed and we got to like actually see her as opposed to last year where we got to watch her family eat cake on zoom which was weird did but you not buy cake for yourself no this was like right as covid was going okay. down and we were like afraid you to go take to the store and all that to buy kind of cake stuff. For yourself. well i'm all for that but we didn't get it <laughs> together and we watched them eat cake um so this year was really nice and my sister made cake like cupcakes in an ice cream cone so like the cone part was like the wrapper part of the cupcake so it was like and it had like frosting on top but it was cake in the middle and it was an ice cream i was like especially for like kids like six years old i was like that is genius you don't have all these wrappers right they still dropped them all over the place like ice cream cones and then the dog was trying to eat it and they were yelling at the dog and the whole thing <laughs> so you still got the full birthday kid experience that's cool but wasn't that cool? That is cool. Apparently, that's a thing. They're called. You can't put them in muffin tins, though. It's too shallow. For, how do you hold the cakes up and the cake cones up? I in think the... she cooked it in a muffin tin. I think. I don't know the exact. I wasn't like there as she was doing up. it all, but she said basically you just use that instead of a wrapper, and it cooks inside the thing. And this is a full size cake cone. Like. Yeah, like the flat bottomed, you know, ice yeah, cream that, ice that cream would, cone. That, that, those would fall over in the. No, apparently they didn't. Unless you just were very very careful and balanced. I mean, it's like filled with batter, so it's got some weight to yeah. it. You know. But anyway, oh yeah, that's a so. thing. Huh? What did she call them? Called them cup 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 cones. Cup cone. That makes sense. Cup cones. Co cone cakes. Cone cakes. Cone that's cakes. That's what it was. That cup cones better. sounds weird. Cup. Yeah. Madonna Same likes concept. those. <clears throat> anyway, so we're gonna be eating this weird candy. All right. And I want to try. And my kids really want to try this too. So I got to bring home the extra. Because I told them how weird it was, and, and they were like, "Oh, it was Drew." These okay. smell bad. These. Come on. Smell. Ew! No, smell these. Smell those. That's nasty. They don't smell that bad, dude. They are kind of stuck to the box, though. That They're smells like, you sickening. Can see that in there. Come on, I'm you don't think those and, smell funky? I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple, please, for myself. Oh God. Help yourself, Drew. Look, there's like the Christmas lights are dots in the, on the label. I'm gonna disgusting. open my satellite wafers like a bag of potato chips. I'm not eating chips. these until I have to. No. Oh, yeah. All right. They sound like maracas. <laughs> See, that's, go, that's fun. Yeah, I will have one of these. These are exciting. They're like different colors. They're, some of them are two-sided. This one's pink and orange. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so let's do the never shall I ever. Never, never shall I ever. Never did I ever do that never thing. Never shan't I ever. All right, I'll, I'll start. Brian. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, what's the first thing? Never have I ever mm -hmm. inked a pen with a new ink before cleaning out the old ink. 
Oh. You mean like... Not at all. No cleaning at all. No cleaning at all. No, nope. empty it and then put. Are you talking more like in. different color? Or different like color. Same color. Different color. I've totally done that. I've totally done that too. Absolutely. All right. All right. Now so I've done it with like an, it's like it was like a a black to a gray or a blue to a dark blue or something like that. But, yeah. 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 If it's close enough, I've definitely done that when it didn't really matter in a pinch, you know that kind of thing. What are you doing? The dot? Oh god. I'll do the dot with you. I'll choose. I'll choose oh. A, I'll choose a. Oh, red, it was like a red one though. It's like creamy lime. Did you bite the white butt off? Right? Yeah. Let's do that. Why are they so sticky? They're really sticky. Oh, God. I'm going to be a little crap in my teeth for the rest of the show. That's not bad. No, but it's not part. good. I mean, it's fine. It's totally neutral. Why is it popular? Hmm? Probably because it's gluten-free. Okay. People are like, oh, well, you have a gluten allergy here. Like a lot of punish you with dots. It's, it's gluten-free because it's like gelatin and sugar. That's all it is. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna hear us smacking our teeth this whole, no, I'm this sorry. whole segment. <laughs> okay, you want to do the next one, Drew? Oh, I'll do the next one. Yeah, we I I grouped them weird. All right, I'll do I'll do all the things listed under mine. How about yeah, that? yeah. Okay, never have I ever spilled a bottle of ink. Have you spilled a bottle of ink? Absolutely. It was a bottle in the garage mm. of um. Uh. Saguaro wine. Noodler's Saguaro oh, wine. That's such a terrible color to spill. Uh, I got pink so all over vibrant. me. Wow. Yep. Oh, I'm not eating too, but you get back in there. I, um, I definitely spilled a bottle of ink. Which I, one? I haven't in a while. It was the first day that I ever used a fountain pen. Really? Yep. Oh, second, man. second filling I ever had. I knocked the bottle of ink over. It was a Dimine 30 mil bottle, which is a plastic tall bottle. Oh, so nothing it's broke. Got you a just very, dumped it. It's got a very narrow neck. Yeah, I tried to fill it and I like didn't clear it out of the bottle and I totally just like tipped the whole bottle over and dumped it all mm. over my kitchen island. We didn't even carry that size, did we? No, this was before we were even selling mm. product. This was literally from the DC Pen Show in 2009. I brought home that stuff, filled up my, it was technically my second filling. I used China Blue as my And you were like, filling. I should make a store where I sell this stuff. Well, you know what? It was part of my <laughs> early experience where I was like, wow, there's kind of a lot to learn with this fountain pen mm -hmm. stuff. And I was a total noob and I spilled my pens and I bought the wrong color of ink and had the whole experience. So No, I think that was a lot of the appeal of your earlier videos too, because you're like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's figure this out together. I mean, has that changed? I still feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. We still about. learn something every day. I think people just expect me to I know think what we, I'm talking about I think about we've reestablished that with this video, you know, how little we know. So. I try, that's my goal is to reestablish that every yeah. video, how little I actually Success. know. We're awesome at that. Okay. All right. Oh, never I, I didn't eat my candy yet. Oh, dude. I didn't eat my candy. Did eat you a wafer. Do, did you do another dot? You want me to do a wafer? Yeah, because... All yeah. right. This one's got blue on it. There so you go. I'm going to eat that one. Blue and orange. Okay. Yeah. Blue. I don't want to just go over the whole thing because I want to show you all like a cross section of what this thing is. Ew, ew, ew. Why is it making that noise? You know what it tastes like? It squeaked. It tastes like a communion wafer. It squeaked. That's what it tastes like. It has zero flavor whatsoever. But just that stale But it's texture. got these, look at these little beads. The beads are blue and white and orange. I wonder if they're blue and orange because it's blue and orange. Mm. You got to give them credit for <laughs> Man, they're like super crunchy. <laughs> I can hear that from over here. They kind of taste like those like non-pareils. Like those little, they're like the round Oh, the sprinkles. sprinkles yes. that you oh, put. I hate those things. Yeah. I hate those. My mm. wife does not like the regular sprinkles, the more waxy ones, which I like. She buys the little stupid balls. Oh, yeah. And they, they, you get those in something, and you're all, all of a sudden you're cracking your teeth on those things. You're like, why are these there? The, <laughs> the wafer part is very odd. <laughs> It is. It weird. doesn't taste. It just doesn't taste. No. Like, it doesn't taste like food. No, you're like I shouldn't be doing this. This is a. This is. I'm. I'm eating something I shouldn't. The non pareil ingest. part is pretty decent. Though. Non pareil. Okay. And they're not like rock hard. They're chewable. They're just kind of noisy. Yeah, they're too. They're Sorry. Too noisy. Anyway. Um. Never have I ever mm. lost a pen part down the sink when cleaning pens. Lost it down the sink. Yeah. <sighs> I have never done that. I have definitely dropped things into the sink i have but it needs to be gone i i think i've lost one i think it was an like an ahab tube you know one of those really small clear tubes oh the, the little breather tube filling, things yeah tube. i think i lost one once mm. so i would have to fit into that category i'm gonna go yeah. for another satellite wafer i had a scare when i was cleaning a 2000 if you've ever cleaned a 2000 you know mm -hmm. the the ears that clip 
onto the cap is a little ring, like this little uh, C-shaped ring that fell in the sink one time with me, and I was terrified that it was gone for good. Um, we're not zooming in on that. We got we got it, blue and orange and white again. There we go. And a blue and pink one. Oh, okay. So I wonder if it's all the same. No, oh, darn. No more points for coordination. Oh my gosh, I'm spilling them all over me. <laughs> Oh, let's build him again. Oh my gosh! Is, I don't right. think I don't think you're supposed to take no, it apart like this. No, it's supposed, supposed to be more Yeah, shot. yeah, yeah. Toss it back. All right, I'll do that for next one. Okay. Ah. Drew, never have I ever lost a pen for a real long time, then found it. I've totally done that. <laughs> I believe I've lost a pen for oh, so dry. two to three years, and then found it again. Two to three years. Yeah. Hmm. Easily. Several pens. I, I, I tell Rachel I don't lose things. I just temporarily misplace <laughs> them because I almost always find them again. But uh, I almost always have something in a state of I don't know where it is. Mm. But I usually find it. Um, this has not happened one. to me. Uh, I'm doing another satellite wafer. Early in my history with the company, I bought two pens for my wife, two uh, Lamy Safaris, a pink one mm -hmm. and an aquamarine one. It's like disintegrating on my tongue. That's how you know it's working. It's a whole different experience when you stick the whole wafer in. <laughs> They're so versatile. And just let it... It's like... It's still weird. Yeah. But anyway, she lost both of those. So I, I, I by um, marriage, have lost two pens um, and then found them years later under her seat. And then I... I won't say I took them away from her, but we mutually mm. agreed that she did not need to be the custodian of the pens any okay. longer all right and i recently put them on ebay so hey so now they're going now they're gone yep wow yes. end of an era no yep. bye bye there you go um all right never have i ever did you eat your candy no i didn't do that one. Oh, because you haven't yeah oh, that was shannon oh, not by my proxy fault. you've lost okay. that's right she, she, i'll Fair bring enough. a dot home for her both rachel and i have lost pens and then found them <laughs> all right never have i ever bought a pen that you used once didn't like, but you still have it. Oh my gosh, hundreds! <laughs> Not hundreds. Hundreds of pens. Not hundreds. I probably have hundreds of pens. You have hundreds of pens, but you don't but have I, hundreds of pens that you don't like. I mean, depends what you mean mean by didn't. I like. mean, like, but you you bought like a pen. I don't like something about them. You bought a pen because you wanted it. Okay. And then like, oh yeah, I don't like this, and then you kept I, it around. I have, a lot, I have a lot of ones I bought that are like part of a collection. Like I have. Like, I get the colors, but I don't like using the pen. Sure. Per se. Okay. So, you go with that. I've got a lot of those. So, this but was for sure. Yes. I've, all right. You I've definitely done that. I, I, I'm going to not eat dot. again because I recently purged a bunch of pens that I bought and didn't like anymore. Um, I put them on eBay. Tried to. Um, oh, I don't like the green. <laughs> no, that was the first one I had. It's disgusting. Yes. I don't like mint. It's lime. Chewy candy. It's, it's lime. It's lime? I think it is. Yeah, I think you're right. cherry, lime, and vanilla. Gross, oh. gross, gross, gross. Well, gross, I thought gross. it was mint, so clearly I don't it's have disgusting. a disgusting. Either way, palette. it doesn't work. But yeah, so I recently was like, you know what? I'm not using these anymore. I'm not into them anymore. Let me, you know, give them to another home. So. It's actually growing on me now that I know that's lime. Ew. I think less of you now. It's all in my teeth, though. <laughs> yes, I have to, like, discreetly pick something Oh, my something gosh. Out. Um, it's got staying power. So, yeah, no longer do I have the, the pens. I have moved on. I was uh, I, I, s I saved up because I want to get um, one of my pens irushied. So I'm going to put mm. all the all the proceeds of my selling, you know, some pens that I no longer love into, you know, a, some custom irushi work for the first time. So I'm Fun. excited about that. Yeah. Fun. You know, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I haven't, like, made this widely public yet, but I just went to the allergist this week and the dermatologist. I'm uh, allergic to urushi. Yes. Urushi all. It's very common to be allergic to it, but I'm... Yep quite sensitive to it yeah so um, you can only, you, know. you can only deal with stuff that has been cured for a very very long time yeah i mean basically in pen form you should be fine you know and and in talking to independent crafts people that work with yurushi it's almost never a problem for anybody with a finished product but you have had problems with finished products before. i have on three different occasions mm -hmm. um so yurushi all for those who want to know mm -hmm. um, we're getting away from the game here a little bit but this is very heavy on my mind because i just researched it a lot and went to the doctor um so basically urushiol is the active uh toxin in poison ivy and poison oak um it's also 
in the Yurushi trees. That is, the Yurushi lacquer is straight up Yurushi all. Um, so when it's in its cured form, it's fine. But when you're working with it or when you touch it in the raw plant, it's highly toxic. Um, break out. And I basically, it's contact dermatitis, so I break out in terrible rashes and it takes weeks to go away and it I won't get too graphic with it, but it gets pretty gross and very painful and itchy. Um, I, the thing that really stinks about it is I've actually had this happen to me at pen shows when I touch pens that have been made by, you know, a crafts person and something like that. And, you know, not to throw anybody under the bus because I really don't think it's something that most people have a problem with. I know that it's mainly a me thing. And in talking to my allergist, he was like, you are one of the most sensitive people I think I've met in my career. And I was like, really? well, aren't I special? So anyway, most people don't even come into contact <clears throat> with that. Right. Well, how would you even know? Like, how would right. you know that that's even your thing? But yet you well, literally work in an industry where it's not uncommon. I, I was able to figure it out at the pen shows because I would handle a pen, which it's like always a special thing when you touch like yeah. a pen or whatever. And oftentimes I will say it's been a pen where somebody's like, hey, I just finished this one. You know, it's not for sale or whatever, but I wanted to show you this technique I'm working on kind of thing, talking about the bar or whatever. I touch the pen and literally I have like finger marks on my arms and face and stuff where I obviously touch the pen, then touch my hand. And I was like, all right, I traveled here. I touched this pen two hours ago and now I have finger marks. I have not left the building. It's clearly the pen. So, you know, it's a weird thing that I have, but it may happen to other people out there. I don't know. So just, you know, a little word of whatever for those of you who know that you're really sensitive to poison ivy and stuff like that, you know, be conscious of, uh, you know, Yurushi pens because what happens is they, they end up getting coated multiple layers of lacquer. It takes like a week to cure each one. If any of the layers are not fully cured, it'll eventually cure, but they cure from the outside in. So basically if you have like any base layer that is not fully, fully cured, it might be like four months later and then that Yurushi oil will leach its way to the surface as it is curing. So that's what makes it so difficult to figure out if you're, you know, independent craft. But I've, I've touched plenty of like Pelican and Pilot and Sailor and Platinum Yurushi stuff and never had a problem. So it's weird. But I've also had it when I've worked with exotic woods. So back in my woodworking days before uh. fountain pens, I worked with some exotic rose woods and some other things because they have Yurushiol in the wood, in the sawdust, and it would get on my arms and I'd break out in rashes. Uh. And uh, also, of course, like poison ivy and various plants that I have, which I did get a cool app that shows me like types of plants that I have around my property. I have like nine toxic plants all over my property. So that's cool. Lucky you. Yeah. I'd rather be blissfully ignorant, but oh well, what are you going to do? Stay so inside. that's kind of weird and gross, but anyway, that's a thing. What were we even talking about? How did I get onto that? <laughs> um, it is your turn. Uh, okay. Bullet three. Never have I ever lost a pen forever. Well, I don't consider lost forever because I'm not <laughs> dead yet. We just talked about this, yeah. I'm not dead yet. I have pens <laughs> that I've... No, I, 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 I have lost a pen that I've now finally admitted. Like, I, I don't think yeah. I'm going to be able to find it again. Mm. Um, it was a Lamy 2000 with an extra fine nib. It was like my journaling pen. It was like my go-to. It's the only pen that I've ever lost and then replaced the mm. exact pen because I was like, dang it, this pen I actually like want and use and all that kind of stuff. I have no idea what happened to it. But because it was like my journaling pen, I would like bring it up when I visit my in-laws. Mm-hmm. I'd bring it to the office a lot, you know, so I just somewhere in transit, it got lost and I couldn't find it again. So. All right. Well, you deserve a wafer then, sir. Thank you. I think they're all blue and white and orange dots. Well, enjoy. Never have I ever yep. bought a vintage pen at a pen show. I have not done that. I feel like I should. Really? Nope. You've been to many pen shows. I have. You I have bought a vintage pen show? I, have, I don't own a single... Like, I have this Namiki's from the 90s, but, like, as far as, like, a true... What do you consider, like, a vintage pen? The oldest pen I have, I, I was given, um, it was a, an old Pelican from, I think, the 50s. But I've never bought a, um, a vintage pen from a pen show. That's actually a good question is what is considered a vintage pen? Yeah, that's true. Either way, I haven't bought a vintage pen at a pen show. I have. I yeah, you you got like some Esther Brooks. I've got, I bought some Esther Brooks. I bought Parker 51, Parker 21, Schaefer Snorkel, mm-hmm. maybe Todd Swan, um, Waterman 52. Yeah. I, I bought several. You know, I'm going to have a dot because I feel a little ashamed of that. Um, wow, well, why are they both lying? You should. You should eat one. Dang. Yeah. See, I'll eat a lime in solidarity. I'm going to put it way back there to minimize the amount of disgustingness that makes no, its way. See, if you bite with the front teeth, mm. there's not as much to get caught in the teeth. 
because you don't have like the molars with all the like because mine's getting all stuck like on the surface of the tooth <laughs> so i gotta like nibble it like this that's really gross i'm sorry <laughs> I'm very okay. sorry to all of our audio podcast listeners. Mm-hmm. This is a super gross episode. Okay. Did you really think you're uh, next? I'm just going to... No, no, you just went. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Never have I ever dropped a pen on the ground, nib first. And this pen it. has some serious nib creep. It's like, look at that. This is like all over the front that of that That is thing. pretty creepy. Man. Drew, I have to admit, I've never dropped a pen. Really? Nib first. I have, and it is a very upsetting story. Come on, Lime. Where are the fruit? Did you take all the red ones? Oh, Lime. God. No, I got a good number of Lime ones here, too. I'm very upset. I have. Can happened I tell the old, story? Yeah, happened in the I old I watched office. it happen. It was tragic. You were in the back? I saw you. You were coming oh, through the door. You saw the walk of shame. I saw it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a pelican with a Richard Bender ground added flex customization to it it's super fine it was a beautiful really thin taper extra extra fine it was a vintage nib so it was nice and bouncy Mm -hmm. and i had it in my hand and i had something else in my hand and i turned the handle to the warehouse with my right hand and as i was turning it slipped out from like my pinky or whatever was holding it and of course i had just stepped into the warehouse which was the transition between carpet and concrete and right on the concrete yeah not only did it bend but one of the tines snapped snapped right off completely yeah unrepairable Mm -hmm. i mean maybe technically repairable but you'd have to weld it back on and everything it was it wouldn't be the same yeah yeah i was behind drew when it happened and i saw him go through the door and drop it and i was like oh no it was not a good day (laughs) it was my favorite it was my favorite nip at the time i don't think you had it long either i think you had it like a couple days or something if i remember correctly it was long enough for me to really really like it Mm. Yeah, that is rough, my friend. Yeah, it was tough. Um, any other time I've and I've dropped pens before. I've they've always been fixable though. Just like a quick little, you know, yeah. one one time being a little lower high. You know, nothing nothing tragic like that. Now, Drew, we do have a sub bullet under here that was dropped a fountain pen and broken it. So not the nib, but have we ever like dropped the pen? Oh. So I guess we could have that as a little bonus mm-hmm. questionnaire. I have done that. Mm. I had and it was terrible because it was like, like it snapped at the grip section or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had a pen that I dropped. It was the Conklin Duraflex, mm-hmm. the first one that we had with the rose gold trim. Yeah, I had like the prototype pen, mm-hmm. like the artist proof. So like number zero zero zero, that was the sample that we got because it was an exclusive. It was literally irreplaceable, mm. and it was, it was. I had my pen case. I was bringing my pen case here. It happened right here in my office. I was gonna go bring my pen case to the pen cleaning station, clean it out. Well, that pen, I didn't have it in the pen loop. It was just like laying in the pen case. I did some crazy fumble thing and I dropped the whole pen case. And because that pen was like loosey goosey inside the pen case, just the way that it hit, it wasn't stable inside the case. And the whole weight of the case just did something weird and it snapped the grip right off the body of the pen. Yeah, I've I've seen that with the Duragraphs. You know, if you drop them, they they do tend to break right at that. It wasn't just like the pen. It was the weight of like the whole case. Yeah, And it just like hit it weird or something. I don't know. So I was like, dang it. Uh, I tried to glue glue it back and then it broke again. Here's my question to you. When it was falling in slow motion, did you try to stick your foot out to catch it? That is normally my default. I know. That is and that I've Just saved. I've saved many pens that way. <laughs> by I really them? have by kicking them. I really have. <laughs> that is like I couldn't even. I couldn't try not to do that if mm-hmm. I if I even wanted to. It's a it's a, it's a coin flip, my friend. You you can go. You could. It is do a total worse coin damage flip. to it. Or, yeah. I yeah. I have I've almost had that instinct burn me because I've like dropped like a kitchen knife before while I'm cooking and my immediate split instinct was yep. stick my foot out and I was like nope that's a terrible nope. idea and saved it but yeah that's that's my go-to instinct whenever I drop something is let me stick my foot out and try and break the fall mm-hmm. yeah I think we all do that that, that sounds like a, the kitchen knife thing sounds like a really good YouTube short where it just like cuts right after you do it just yeah. like roll credits those Absolutely. curb your enthusiasm credits you know yes oh god all right go. um, oh, so I should eat the, I should eat something yeah you do all right mm-hmm. never have I ever Hung out at the bar after a pen show well after you intended to stay up that night. Hmm. What if you intended to stay up well after you intended? Does that count? I don't think you know the meaning of intent. 
I mean, I knew I should go to bed, but I was like very okay with staying up way past when I intend when I knew that I did should. You in, did you intend to stay up as late as you did? I intended to stay up late, and then I still stayed up past that. So I would say, okay, so then yes. I've done both. I yes, guess. yeah, I've, so, I've, yeah, I've definitely done that. Another, I'm not doing this again. We're Where's coming. the red one? Give me that. We're gonna. I'm gonna go out with a bang on the last one because we got one more question. I definitely. Yeah, done I remember this. when we went to Georgia, we stayed up way late. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking of. Yeah, right? Atlanta. I've, I've done it at DC too. Oh, that was super late. Oh, this happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just put that in my mouth as I'm talking. All <laughs> right, last question. Never have I ever been handed a ballpoint pen and discreetly pulled out a fountain pen to use instead. Not only have I done this, I did this two days ago. Really? I was at the doctor's office. And first off, I'm at the doctor's office. And I'm like, gross. I don't want to use all these, you know, it's a <laughs> big ballpoint pen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no. Yeah. And also, like, how many other people are touching this pen? Like, no, thank you. Yep. I mean, I'm sure they clean and all that kind of stuff. But sure. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. And uh, yeah, so I totally just like had the pen. I was like, yeah, thanks. And I had my own pen and didn't make a big deal about it. I was discreet. Yeah, that's how you, you know? do it. But then uh, you, you don't you don't be like <coughs> throw it. I wasn't going like, to be like, no, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, don't you know who I am? I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com. Hand me a big rollerball. <laughs> but I do have to explain myself to every doctor that I go to because they're like, so what do you do? I'm like, well, I do fountain pens. Fountain pens, really? Okay. And it's like a whole thing. Somebody gave me a Mont Blanc one time. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Um, I have not um, because really? no, I've done it with a retro rollerball a bunch of times actually. Usually my my weekend thing is just a pocket of a retro and go about my business. I usually don't carry a fountain pen with me when I'm out and about in just my pocket hmm. because I just don't like dealing with the jostling. Every time I've tried to do that, it's been hmm. you know I'm I'm too active. I've got a seven year old. I'm rolling around on the ground like that thing's too gonna. Active. I'm gonna have not like in. In in a what are you doing? I'm gonna you go with a bang. I'm gonna have all three. Ew! Oh, stop it! Don't even. Oh, oh, oh it's like it, stop it. And styrofoam's like sticking to the dots. Oh man, this is a chore. <laughs> oh, I gotta like work at this. Oh god. Anyway, yes, mm. I usually just have a uh, a retro. Tastes pretty good though. I have two retros at home. I have my space one, my uh, um, Discovery shuttle one, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, my system one from. Uh, mm. uh, who's the guy with the with the the, the, the pen block? I'm not gonna help you out, Mike Dudek. Mike Dudek, yes, Dudek, yeah. So, yep, yeah. that's it. So that is good our stuff. flex segment, the butchered, not correct, worst version of Never Have I Ever. So you're welcome for that. Fun stuff. And we got candy left over for my kids. They're going to be thrilled. Yes, please take all of these. I'm really I am going to. I might eat some on the way home, actually. Oh, They're not God. too bad. I'm not as down on the dots as you are.